All right. Thank you for joining us. This is a little mini webinar that we put together just to talk about the best whole life insurance. We, as a group here at Insurance and Estates, we love whole life insurance. Barry being our point person for a lot of whole life strategies. Barry's on the call. Appreciate it, Barry, for you joining us. Thanks for having me. Barry runs the Focus Wealth Group, and it's also our point person at Insurance and Estates for these kinds of strategies involving whole life. Our goal today is just to help you understand your options when it comes to whole life insurance, you know, the companies out there, and, and what is it, what does a whole life policy entail? You know, what is that? What makes it different from other kinds of life insurance? Part of that question is the difference between a mutual versus a stock life insurance company. That's a clue to what we're going to talk about. And we also want to do, our, we have an article on our website at insuranceinestates.com, 16 best whole life companies in the U.S. And we're not going to talk about all 16. You guys can read that. All you need to do is go to the blog page at insuranceinestates.com and search that and you're welcome to see those companies. All right. So we're just going to talk a little bit about our criteria for identifying those companies. And we're going to talk about a few of our top companies, sort of peel back the veil a little bit on who we like at this point. With that, we'll jump right in. Barry, you're the expert when it comes to a mutual versus a stock company. Jump right in and let us know what your perspective of that is. Very good. Thank you. A mutual company is owned by us as policyholders, whereas a stock company is owned by investors. And the big kicker here is when a company is profitable and they pay a dividend, where does that dividend go? In a mutual company, it comes back to us, the policyholders, and that's really important. We want to participate in the profits of the company. Whereas in a stock company, you might have a policy with that stock company, but when the dividend is paid, you don't get it. That dividend goes to the investors. The other difference is that a mutual company tends to invest much more conservatively. Why? Because they're not looking to appease investors on a quarterly return basis. They want to take care of the policyholder, so they invest more conservatively. Whereas a stock company, they're looking at, hey, let's improve our quarterly return. They want investors to be happy. They tend to invest a little more aggressively, not as conservatively. Overall, here at Insurance and Estates and Focus Wealth Group, we're helping our clients get into mutual insurance policies because they're safer, they're less risky, and the mutual companies invest more conservatively. Barry, is it fair to say that if somebody wants to have a policy, that it's kind of a no-brainer to be with a mutual company? I think the biggest criteria when someone's looking at a cash value permanent whole life policy, that they want to earn as much return and grow that cash value as high as possible. And in that case, they would want to go with the mutual because of the dividends, those profits come back to the policy holder in the form of a dividend that is invested back into the cash value. They're going to grow cash value more rapidly. Right. Well, do you want to talk about dividends real quick? In regards to a dividend, what is often misleading is you'll have an advisor tell one of their clients, for example, Mass Mutual's dividend right now is 6.2%. Well, if that's all the client hears, what does the client think? Hmm. They think they're going to earn 6.2%. Right. <laughs> that isn't true. The dividend is a gross number, generally speaking. Now, that isn't always the case, but generally speaking, it's a gross number, and there has to be some expenses and costs taken out of that dividend. So DIR, the dividend interest rate, you can read here, some quote their DIR before investment expenses, and some like Mass Mutual quote their DIR net of these expenses. You don't use the dividend interest rate as the sole basis for comparing one company to another. What you really want to do is look at the illustrations and the cash values and the death benefit in that particular company's illustration. Yep, and it's case by case, isn't it, Barry? It could be some companies, depending on how you want to pay your premiums, some will do better in the short term and maybe not so much in the long term and vice versa. That's right. That's why it's so important to use an expert hmm, because right. the time frame you fund a premium, your age, your health, your lifestyle, all that comes into play. 
it's not just one policy fits all. We get very specific on designing a very unique policy for that particular client. Right. All whole life insurance isn't created equal. And there's a big difference, isn't there, between a traditionally designed whole life policy that's all based on the death benefit versus a high cash value policy. That's correct. Barry, with the idea of all whole life not being created equal, we can move on to our criteria. Piggybacking to what we have on the website, we have a lot of top whole life companies listed, a few different articles. One of them is top 16. So I thought we would just touch on our criteria. And of course, if you wanted to speak to it from your practical experience, you know, we've got obviously a mutual company for the reason that you just mentioned. We also want to have good ratings. We want it to be a dividend paying whole life policy. One of the major criteria for us, I just want folks to know is that sometimes we're not including a well-known large company in our top criteria because we don't tend to go with captive companies. In other words, we'd like our experts like Barry to be able to offer the best company based on performance and not just have to push a particular company because we're captive. People don't always understand that, but it's really important. And of course, PUA options. We have a whole paid up additions is a big part of this, putting extra cash into your policy. And we have a whole other webinar on paid up additions that you guys listening might be a natural uh, next step. The freedom and independence of being with many non-captive companies allows me as an advisor to give clients the best of the best. And then when it comes to PUA, this is the overfunding of cash value. Unfortunately, many advisors and so-called financial gurus out there are only selling or talking about traditional whole life. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about a whole life that's uniquely designed with a paid up additions writer to grow cash value more rapidly. And the companies we use, our top companies are the best at doing that. Very aggressive cash value growth, tax-free use of money, which overall, it's so interesting. The client, Steve, gets a better policy that costs them less money. Hmm. And they love that. Hmm. Oh yeah. I've learned a lot from Barry over the years and I feel like there's a couple different things going on. One is there's a huge misnomer about whole life being expensive out there. And one of the reasons that that's a misnomer is because that's based on the idea of simply a straight up policy with base premium where you're just buying a large amount of death benefit. And what would happen is it would take a long time to build up cash value. I'm just mentioning all this stuff because it goes into what is the best whole life. The best policy. So we just touched on best company. We talked about paid up additions, talked about dividends, permanent death benefit, guaranteed cash value growth, and fixed premiums. These are all huge benefits when you compare to other kinds of life insurance. Barry, you want to talk about other kinds of life insurance that might be popular and why this might be a better option? The most popular type of life insurance today is IUL or indexed universal life. And it can work in some cases, but for most people, it's not a good fit. Indexed universal life has increasing insurance costs, whereas the insurance cost in a whole life policy is fixed. It's not gonna increase when you're in your 60s or 70s or 80s. The problem in IUL with increasing insurance costs is if the client doesn't make a higher premium payment later in life, and I'm talking a lot higher, the insurance company takes that higher premium from that client's cash value. The Mm -hmm. cash value can get eroded, depleted, and ultimately the policy can lapse. Mm -hmm. There's also variable universal life or traditional universal life. And universal life has only been around since about the mid 80s. It's a relatively new product in the world of life insurance, but it was unfortunately built on the chassis of annual renewable term insurance, which is that increasing cost of insurance. Whereas whole life, it's a level term platform, meaning there are no increasing costs. That's why we can say it's fully guaranteed for a fixed premium. It's fully guaranteed on the cash value and it's fully guaranteed on the death benefit. Uh, And it's been around for over 200 years, time-tested, well-established. 
Yep, and dividends continuing through some of the toughest patches in uh, history, correct? That is correct. The two top companies that we use, they've paid dividends for over 150 years without missing a year. So that's through world wars, a Great Depression, the crash of 08, always paying dividends. Mm, that's huge. Correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, I've been told by a few people in this area that you know, an IUL really shifts the risk from the company to the consumer. That is accurate. And it's unfortunate too, because don't we buy all types of insurance because we want to shift our risk to someone that knows how to handle that risk? And that's why we buy insurance. But in an IUL, the risk really does fall back onto the shoulders of the policyholder. Now, if there's a premature death, obviously the death benefit's going to be paid out. But insurance companies plan on people living a long time. And in that case, if you live a long time and you find that your universal life policy, the returns haven't met what the expectations were, your insurance costs are so high, you lose your policy, all those premiums you've put in now have gone to waste and you don't have a death benefit. That's an issue. I want to make sure that our clients are sleeping well at night. We're going to sleep well at night and we do that using whole life. Absolutely. The beauty of it is that you can see the categories here, you guys that are watching the guaranteed cash value growth. In every policy, it's a whole life policy, illustrates the guarantee. That's a locked in amount. It's not going to fluctuate. And the law requires that these illustrations for whole life are done very conservatively. So one of the amazing things about being in, in such a low interest rate environment is that you know, it's a very conservative time to look at whole life. You're right. They do take a very conservative approach. When you look at, say, a stock market portfolio, a mutual fund allocation, they usually do a 20-year look back for historical performance, which could make the return look really, really good. Not in a life insurance policy. When the life insurance company puts forth their future projections on cash value, they're simply using today's dividend, not a 20-year look back, which would make the illustration look a lot better, but it would be unrealistic. So I like that they take that conservative approach. Today's dividend, we project it forward, not a 20-year look back. Our best whole life insurance has predictability because of the guaranteed return, cash flow, leverage, liquidity, if you guys are interested in more information, next step could be a one-to-one -one discussion with Barry. You've got some resources. You can click the link below to get started on that. Barry, do you have any other thoughts in closing? I'll just wrap up and say that with the best whole life policies, we've talked about criteria. Look at your own numbers. Determine the amount of premium you want to put into a policy. My goal, my job for all my clients is to give them the absolute best policy right out of the gate. So day one, they're getting cash value growth. They're maximizing PUAs. They then learn how to use the policy. They'll create more wealth throughout their life. Mm. Awesome. Excited to have you guys here. Appreciate it. Look forward to helping you when the time is right for you. Thanks.